Hey guys, running back, and we're about to check out episode three of Samurai Champloo. Um, it's been a great experience so far, just uh, re-experiencing the music and the stories that I've kind of forgotten, um, because there's a lot of really small details that I've forgotten along the way. I only kind of maybe remember like the major beats, if anything like that. So we're just gonna keep on going on here. Uh, feel free to check out Patreon. I am about two episodes ahead of YouTube, and uh, we do have a Discord server. Feel free to jump on that too. So we're gonna go ahead and jump on this. I'm not sure if I still have this because I, I keep moving um, and I sometimes end up losing things along the way but one of the things I did used to have here in the background like a couple iterations ago was uh, I had a picture of Mugen signed by Steve Bloom and it just he told me to shut up. <laughs> favorite Mugen line? I don't have a favorite Mugen line but one thing that I love when he says is shut up so I'm just gonna write that. This is not to you this is just because he says that. <laughs> there it is, buddy. Thank you. I'm gonna have to look that up. I was just like, just write, like, what's your favorite thing is, what was your favorite line is Moog? And, and he's like, you know what? I really love the way that he says, shut up. So he just put shut up and I was like, okay, fair enough. So hopefully I still have it laying around here. If I still have it somewhere, I'll someday put it back up here on here. Let me get behind you, huh? <laughs> You're getting sloppy letting your guard down like that. Already going at it. <sighs> Morning workout. We're done. <laughs> Out of gas. If it weren't for me, you'd both be history right now. So I'm not gonna let you two break your promise to me. Got it? Until we find the samurai who smells of sunflowers. <laughs> She's just nagging him. Yeah, I gotta admit, you're the bomb. A babe like you will do fine on your own, right? Right. What the hell does that mean? Jeez, just going along with it. Sayonara, sweetheart. <laughs> I completely forgot that they ditched her at some point. They would rather put off their, their fight and just go away just, just to get away from her nagging. These guys are made men, if you know what I mean, sir. You mean Yakuza? Yeah. Yakuza. <laughs> Try laughing when you're dead. <laughs> How would you like me to treat you to something a lot better than this stuff? You're strong and you got a lot of guts. Yeah, sure. I like you. Huh? But boss, you get balls. I like balls. Not that I would ever get tattoos like that, but those do look pretty cool. Before long, a man's status and title won't mean anything in this country. All that'll matter is who has the most power. My intuition has never been wrong yet. Hmm. So interesting how quickly Mugen got in with that. Father, go back inside now. When someone can't pay us, they have to give us something of equal value instead. Uh, that's slimy. For many years, this town's been controlled by Yakuza called the Kawadage. Been that way as long as I can remember. This has always been a peaceful town. But then about six months ago, those thugs called the Nagatomi gang showed up. And Which is who Mugen's with, and now Jean's on the other end of it. We could lose everything to the Nagatomi gang. Even our women! At this rate, it won't be long before they gain control of our entire territory. Boss! 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 I think I think I missed the detail on who he was exactly. Is he like a an opposing yakuza? Tough little bastard. <laughs> you are an interesting guy. How'd you like to join forces with me? Huh? If we combine my expertise and money with your courage, it's <laughs> you know the entire crap. That game with the dice was rigged, wasn't it? What's that? Take over the country, my ass. You're even phonier than your dice. At least Mugen tells him like it is. If you didn't cheat him out of his money, he wouldn't owe you anything, you bastard! What's your problem, kid? Get lost. Kid, come back when you grow up. Yeah, he's just gonna get his ass kicked. I believe you have need of a bodyguard. Watch, and I'll show you my skill. Say what, you <laughs> third-rate samurai? <laughs> So badass. 
Give me that. Uh. Give me the IOU. Here, take the damn thing, and I hope you choke on it. You'll pay for this, you bastard. Yep, that might be more bad news, though. Fine, see if I care. I don't need them. I'll look for the sunflower samurai by myself. <laughs> she ended up at the same time any anyway. Well, I'll give you a hint. <laughs> I would beware of vases if I were you. Vases? Beware of vases. This gang doesn't need two men doing the same job. Come on. <laughs> Bugan's just ridiculously agile. Pretty sweet. Get over to that cabinet maker's place and grab his daughter. So they're gonna grab her anyway. Oh no! I sure hope you can pay for it. What's it worth? A hundred drill. How much? Yeah. That just makes me mad, you know. Luck. I have a job that you're perfect for. It makes me wish you could just you teleport me into this and like put me in that situation and be like, I f dare you to blame that on me. This was about your family, but now it's a lot more complicated. You have only yourself to blame because your friends hired a tough bodyguard. You used to be my boss, but not anymore. Address me respectfully or not at all. Well, now you've seen it for yourself, right? Anger breeds more anger, destroying those around it. And once it's begun, it's a never-ending cycle. They're walking all over us. Doesn't it bother you? And what about Osuzu? You can't just leave her. Yeah, he's got to do something, man. Let's go. If the Kawaras won't hire you as a bodyguard, then I will. I forbid it. I'm going after all those Nagatomi bastards. <laughs> Jean's like, um, I'm getting paid, right? We'll help each other and hope for the best. Hope's a wonderful thing, but I've none left. I'll be helping my father pay his debts by working here, but still. They probably have it to where, like, she's going to be working for, like, a really long time. Like, longer than she needs to, right? I kind of feel like that's, like, inherently part of the deal. We were wondering if your establishment had any jobs available. Can't help you, pal. That's one huge broad. <laughs> you look pretty good in that outfit. It's quite uncomfortable. <laughs> the fact that Jean agreed to even do all that. What the? Look who's here. What the hell? Everybody's together again. What about the promise you made not to kill each other? Fate's gonna keep throwing us back together. It's pretty interesting. I, I um. I feel like this time around I've paid a bit more attention to uh, a bit of the details of like the the motivations of the the yakuza in in the situation. Um, I mean it's it's fairly basic, but I don't remember like paying a whole lot of attention to it to begin with. I think I was just more interested in just Mugen, Jean, and Fu like getting back together and then you know having more cool fights and more funny banter back and forth. But if it's kind of like a, a story where, you know, it's kind of like a one-off thing or something, I tend to, my, my mind would just kind of kind of trail off and not pay attention to everything. But maybe because now that I'm doing like reactions, I'm, I'm paying more attention to this stuff or I'm trying to anyway. So it's just fun to like go through it now and like actually like really paying attention to all the details, even if it's a storyline that's not gonna, you know, it's not part of the main arc of the entire thing. So that's pretty been pretty fun. I think there's a lot of themes uh, throughout Champloo that I was just thinking that this isn't going to be our last time we go through a, bro a brothel, I don't think. Um, we're going to be going through a few of those. And so it's kind of like a reoccurring theme for sure. This uh, And Champloo kind of has some similar vibes to like Cowboy Bebop in the sense that the main characters constantly get into trouble. <laughs> so they try to like do a thing and then it doesn't always like play out the way it should or you know like in Cowboy Bebop when they try to go for a bounty like it never works out like they never really get the bounty so they're just always poor so it's kind of like a similar situation here like you know they're always poor they're just trying to get by so they got to do like you know some bodyguard jobs and stuff like that there's samurai and i think this is kind of during a time when samurais are the age of the samurai is is going to so the, the the world's getting modernized and like they're still relevant right now but like they're kind of it's the beginning of the end for them i think so it's just kind of interesting that they're still currently within a time in which it's it's relevant and it's cool to see like how they have to deal with things for this time anyway cool episode i forgot like this 
uh, this was going to be a two-parter. But yeah, so we'll go ahead and uh, call it here. And I hope you guys enjoyed the reaction. And I will see you next time. Mm -hmm.